Graphics Programming, the field of computer science responsible for putting pixels on a screen in an organized and efficient manner. The process used for doing this is called rendering, and it can be used for both 2D and 3D objects. It utilizes a lot of linear algebra, and you can break rendering into two main fields, CPU rendering, also known as software rendering. It's slower, it's not the industry standard at all, and it iterates over every pixel in the screen sequentially, or you can multi-thread it, which makes it a little faster, but it's still substantially slower than its counterpart, GPU rendering. GPU rendering is fast, it's the default for all 3D and 2D these days, and it actually has dedicated hardware in your computer for the purpose of rendering, namely the GPU. You're probably watching this video because you want to make a render of your own, and having written a few of them, I have a few thoughts on how I would do this. The first thing you need to know is graphics programming is hard. If you're coming into this from web-based development or mobile development, there's going to be a pretty steep learning curve as you have to learn much lower level programming languages and a lot of concepts you probably never came into contact with in your previous experience. The learning curve is extremely steep, but once you get the hang of it, it's extremely satisfying. You can essentially put anything you want on the screen in any way. The computer is now your sandbox. There really is no one right way to do things, and if you can think of a way to do things better, you're free to do it. The first step is you need to pick a graphics API. Graphics APIs are the frameworks responsible for allowing you to communicate with the GPU hardware. When you traditionally write code, it gets compiled and run on the CPU, and it's very straightforward because all programming languages are made to run on the CPU. The GPU is a completely separate piece of hardware, and multiple different organizations have written APIs that allow you to write code, typically C, C++, Rust, or other low-level languages, but you can find bindings for literally any language. Anyway, these APIs let you use whatever language you want and access the GPU. You have a few different APIs to choose from, some of them being a lot easier than others. The most universal beginner API is definitely OpenGL. OpenGL was once the industry standard, and though it's now in a lot of cases deprecated or not officially supported, it is still widely used in almost any graphics programming context, and it is a phenomenal starting API as a lot of the concepts you learn in OpenGL transfer to other APIs. A thing to know about OpenGL is that it's cross-platform, meaning your OpenGL code ideally runs on Linux and Mac and Windows without any real headache of cross-compatibility. There's other APIs like DirectX 11 and Metal, and these are both specific to different hardware. For example, DirectX only runs on Windows and Metal only runs on Mac. These three APIs are typically your more beginner-friendly APIs. Then you've got the hard ones. You've got DirectX 12, which also only runs on Windows, and Vulkan. These two APIs are the gold standard in current graphics programming, and they are extremely hard. If you're starting off, I do not suggest starting with DirectX 12 or Vulkan unless you really, really, really want to learn the industry standard, and you have a very firm foundation in low-level programming. There's other APIs to note, like SDL, which allows for software rendering, and is also a good introduction, only I'm not sure how well the concepts translate to the more complex APIs. Now that you've picked your API, you need to understand the basics of the graphics pipeline. The graphics pipeline can look very different depending on the API you use, but they generally follow a very similar high-level structure. You upload your vertex data, and this can be positions, colors, really any data you want to store in every vertex of a model. And then you upload your per object data. So transformation matrices, camera matrices. The term matrix is a linear algebra term, and matrices are extremely important to all graphics programming. Someone once explained to me that matrices were the Excel spreadsheets of math, and that's a very good description. They're really not that bad once you figure out the general sense of how they work. Transformation matrices are responsible for where your object is in space and camera matrices are responsible for where your camera is in space and what kind of projection you're using. The next step is shaders. Shaders are code written in a special language that runs directly on the GPU for every pixel on your screen. Typically, you're gonna deal with a vertex shader and a fragment shader, although there are other kinds you could be working with. Vertex shaders are responsible for where should I place the vertices of a mesh on the screen. They are responsible for applying your transformation matrices and your camera matrices. Then you have fragment shaders. Fragment shaders are run for every pixel on the screen and they're responsible for the visual fidelity of your model, if you will. Fragment shaders are where you calculate things like shadows, lighting, reflections, really anything that is different per pixel on the screen. From here, once you have your shaders set up and you've properly uploaded all your data, you let the API do its magic and you are given a finished result. There's a lot more to it than this, but this is the general high-level overview of how graphics programming works. To summarize, here's a general guide on which API I would use depending on the person. The default case, really almost everyone watching this video, should start with OpenGL. It's very straightforward compared to the other APIs, and once you have a strong grasp of OpenGL, it significantly reduces the learning curve of other things like DirectX 12 and Vulkan. If you're a Windows purist, you should definitely start with DirectX 11, as it is the 
Windows Gold Standard, and then go to DirectX 12, as it's the modern Windows Standard. If you're the oddball watching this video, who really for some reason wants to learn the modern industry standard before learning the easier frameworks, and you happen to have very strong low-level programming skills, you should definitely go with DirectX 12 or Vulkan. But I cannot warn you enough, Vulkan is a very, very steep learning curve compared to any of these other frameworks. I have not had really any experience with DirectX 12, but from what I hear, it is very similar to Vulkan, so just be aware of that. In closing, graphics programming is extremely hard. Between debugging low-level system code and shader errors, which are oftentimes not actually an error and are just your screen showing you something that makes no sense. Despite this, it is by far my favorite field of computer science, and if you really get into it, I think it will be yours too. You can literally make anything, you're not constrained by any pre-built tools like game engines, and truly, the screen is your sandbox. It's awesome. That's really all I have to say. This video is already going on way longer than it should.